in this age where we're having COVID, where we're having all this distancing and all of those things, we need to still stay in his fellowship. Amen. 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 Whether we're doing it in a in a small family Bible study with folks that you're you're with and feel safe around, whether you're doing it here in the sanctuary, whether you are um, doing something else just to get with other folks. God said, do not forsake the assembling one to one in, with one another. Because there's so much assembly going out there going against God, amen, amen, that we need some of that assembly coming for him. And we can stay encouraged and be blessed amen. by that. God amen. 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 Um, I just thank God for being here this morning. I just yes. praise him. I just glorify him for what yes. he's doing in our lives. Yes. But I just, again, want to say God is good. He is our awesome Amen. God. Yes. Amen. And I love him. Yes. Uh, we have a niece um, that lives in New York. And um, we celebrated with her on the 18th. Um, she was diagnosed uh, with stage four cancer. And, but she never gave up. Yes. You know, even to the point where Amen. she celebrated her birthday. Um, she had another birthday, which was on, which she came here to South Carolina, and she celebrated again. But she's doing wonderful, wonderful, because Amen. she trusts and believes that God is able to heal. Yes. Yes. And she Amen. is continually saying, I got this. Amen. God Amen. says, live and not die. Amen. And that's what she's doing. Amen. 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 And I tell you, I just thank God for being here this morning Amen. because where else would I want to go? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God for all the testimonies. I, some of you may be wondering why my bride is not with me this morning. Well, one of the reasons is be, well, her sister was placed in the hospital this week. It's a good thing. And the reason why it's a good thing, because she has stayed con continuously to be home, she may not have been with us today. Right. So uh, this morning she is at the hospital with her, because we know to today or tomorrow we got to transport her, or they're going to transport her to um, the medical hospital in Charleston. She's doing well. She's up in good spirit and everything. And, but the main thing is they want to get some tests run and make sure everything be all right. Otherwise than that, my bride will be beside me. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. So all testimonies are not sad testimonies. They are grateful testimonies. Amen. And everything that we do is glorifying God. Yes. And we always got to glorify God in whatever we do. He said in his word, he told us one day, he said, I beseech you, brothers, in I'm so joy right now, so full. I just I forgot what I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I beseech you, brothers, with the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, yes. holy. holy and acceptable unto God, who is your reasonable servant. Yes. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, yes. that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yes. Let us go through the throne of grace. Yes. Our Lord and our Father, we glorify you now. Because you're so excellent and you're so wonderful to us. We love you, Father God, because you first loved us. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us out in the darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for continuously to mold and shape us to the children that you have called us to be. Thank you, Father God, for even disciplining us. And thank you for our chastisement. But, Father God, we thank you more for just being who you are. We just glorify you every morning because you are God all by yourself. 
And Father God, we just thank you for each and every one that is here this morning. We bless you, Father God, for just allowing their home to be glorified and to praise you and to worship you. Allow them to be that light that's set upon the hill that all men may see that you are a true and a living God. Oh, we just glorify you now, Father God. We glorify you, Father God, because you have allowed us to worship you. There is no one greater to worship. So, Father God, as we go into the service and as we continuously to worship you this morning, just fill our hearts and our mind with your spirit. Just overflow us this morning that we may say thank you. We will be burning on the inside. We will be like Jeremiah, willing to tell somebody that you are real. We say thank you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from the book of John, the 17th chapter. Book of John, the 17th chapter. We will begin at the 14th verse. John 17, 14 through 21. I have given them your word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you shall take them out of the world, but that you shall keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for this sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for them alone, but also for those who will believe in me through these words, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reader and the doer of his word. At this time, we will have a selection, and after our selection, we will have our announcement. God bless you.
Reverend Fred, Reverend Witherspoon, officers, and all who have come to worship with us today, good morning. Good morning. We regret to inform you of the passing of Brother James Bubba Boyd on yesterday. Funeral services will be held on Friday, October the 8th at 11 o'clock a.m. at Simmons Funeral Home Chapel. Let us keep the family in our thoughts and prayers. Let us also continue to remember our healing and homebound members and lend assistance where necessary. If any young person would like to join the praise dance team, you're asked to see Sister Yolanda Ryan or Sister Della Hallman as soon as possible. Thank you. At this time, we call your attention to the announcements printed on the back of the church bulletin. You're reminded again of in-person Sunday worship service. Every week, you have the options listed there. The Samaritan House, fourth Thursday evening meals, volunteers are needed. You need to please contact Sister Diana Ransom at her number that is listed. Save the dates. Our Wednesday in-person Bible studies in the Fellowship Hall are being held. 5 o'clock p.m. Bible study with Deacon Hallman and 6 o'clock p.m. discipleship with Pastor Prince. Again, you may bring light refreshments and water will be available. Our Thursday night prayer call at 7 o'clock p.m. The call-in number is 1727-731-6480. The background scripture is Matthew 6, chapter verses 1 through 15, and the focus scripture is Matthew 6, chapter verses 11 through 12. Again, choir rehearsal on Saturdays at 10 o'clock a.m., all are invited. Again, we have our sick, homebound, and disabled listed, as well as our October commemorations. And you're reminded also, again, of the time capsule and your ideas. We also, at this time, would like to call your attention to several announcements that are printed on the attached page in reference to our anniversary celebration. The Bell Plaza Memorial Bricks dedication will be held on next Sunday, immediately after worship services. Again, the time capsule ideas are still being accepted. The anniversary mass, that deadline is today. That's been extended, I think, so the deadline is today. Please order your anniversary mask. And also the banquet tickets, that deadline has been extended also until next Sunday. So please make sure you get your banquet tickets. You don't want to miss that. Info, miss that, uh, miss that. Again, historical documents and pictures are being accepted for display at the banquet. You ask to see Brother Shuler or Sister White concerning those. At this time, we'd like to recognize any visitors that we may have worshiping us today through any of our various methods. I don't think we have visitors in the sanctuary, but we're happy to have those of you who are visiting us online or out in the parking lot. We're glad you stopped in with us today, and we hope you will join us again. We thank you for your attention to the announcements. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord again. It was truly um, sad news, but yet wonderful news to hear about Brother James Boyd this week. Um, many of you all know him much longer and much more than I, and you all can speak to his love and speak towards his dedication and speak towards his membership here. My experience with him here was wonderful. In the couple months before we separated from COVID, we were able to have several conversations. It was always nice to see him dressed in his new and different suits each and every Sunday, and then when he was uh, hospitalized and went to the center. We went and visited with him a couple times. And of course, as you, you hear us say often, we came to offer him comfort and joy, but I left there the one laughing and comforted and enjoy. So that is very, very wonderful. So again, the services of this Friday at 11 at Simmons Funeral Home, his grandson, his beloved grandson from the Washington, D.C. area is coming down. He is a pastor as well, and he will be performing the services on Friday at 11. So we hope that if you all are able, that you all may attend. We're so thankful that you're here again on this communion Sunday. We're just so appreciative of your presence, no matter where you find yourself today. We're very thankful for that. We want to, um, again, emphasize that we will be having the Bell Plaza dedication right after service. So we're going to go right after the benediction. We're going to have a little short 
dedication service that will be right here in the sanctuary and then we'll walk out to the Bell Plaza in song. Amen. So have yourself ready for that. If you need to have some walking shoes and things, wear them that day. Amen. And we'll walk right out to the Bell Plaza. We're just still soliciting any photos, any pictures that you all have from all of church history that you want to send and submit. We are still collecting those and look forward to receiving them. Prayer meeting has been wonderful on Thursday. The numbers have been growing. The prayers have been wonderful. And we've been hearing testimonies about God answering prayer because the word of God tells us that the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And so we invite you to come out and join. You can join and add your prayers to the voices, add your prayer requests, or just simply listen on mute. And that is fine as well. We have homegrown intercessors and intercessors that come in to visit as well. And on our Wednesday evening, our Bible study is growing. And Deacon Holman is there to be able to expound upon the message that you will hear today. And we've been doing good with that. Because when we share the message, it's one way. But when you come to Bible study, we get to go back and forth and talk about it and discuss it. There might be more insights that you have that the Spirit didn't lead me to say. Or there might be some questions you have about what Isis said and how it can be clarified. And then after that, we have our disciple class as well, where right now we're dealing with the creation. And so if you come, and that's the time to discuss. There's not a one-sided Bible study. I talk for a few minutes, but most of it's just discussion time. And so in addition to these Bible studies, even when we have transitions, we ask, are there questions you have about scripture? Are there topics or subjects that you want to know more about? Then come and share them with us and bring us there and we will um, address those as well. Amen? Amen, amen. So if you're taking notes for today's message and for the Bible study this Wednesday, these are the scriptures you might want to list down. The first two are in the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. 3, 1 through 5. And the Gospel of John 17, 14 through 21, which we've just heard. 17, 14 through 21. Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Mark 9, 2 through 8. Acts 2, 1 through 4. Most of these scriptures are very familiar with you. You're very familiar with. Acts 2, 1 through 4. First Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 through 23. First Thessalonians 5, 18 through 23. And then finally the 23rd Psalm. 23rd Psalm. Amen, amen, amen. Well, as we continue in a mode of worship. As we've been listening to the news this week, so many things are going on. And one of the things going on in this country is they've been wrestling and fighting over the debt ceiling. Whether or not they're going to have a new budget, whether or not they're going to raise the debt ceiling. And it's just so telling that we have to have battles year after year after year to raise the debt ceiling. That means that we have so much debt that even what we're borrowing and we're going to hit the limits of that. So now we've got to raise that credit limit even higher. Y'all have had a credit card where you reached to the max and now you've got to try to call them up and beg, can we get a little bit more room in that so I can get a little bit more debt? You know, That's what our country is doing. And that's what our state is doing. And that is a horrible thing. Now we can't, as little people right where we are, do anything to fix that right now. But why I'm bringing that up is a couple reasons. One, we need to keep our nation in prayer, amen? But in addition to that, realize that their wisdom is foolishness in God's eyes. Yes, it, is. it is flawed. We have no debt ceiling at Mount Calvary. Amen. amen. There is no debt at Mount Calvary. And that's praise be to God. Amen. We thank God for that. But one of the reasons is why is because we've been charged to do what he's asked us to do. And he says, be debtors or lenders to no one. God's plan is the only plan and is the best plan amen? amen so when we hear about all these things going on in the world we're in the world but we're not of it as that scripture said amen. and we need to make sure that we are obedient to what his word is so let's have that spirit in mind of truth as our ushers come forward and receive from us your gifts your tithes 
and your offerings. pray dear lord we're just so so thankful for the privilege of giving we're so thankful that no matter where we find ourselves on the economic ladder or stratus we can be philanthropists we can be ones that give we can be ones that add to your table lord god we can be the ones that add to your storehouse so that those who are in need even in more need than we are seeing right now they can be provided for. Lord God, we thank you for the provisions that we as a church have, have gathered together over the years and over the decades and over the century and over the century and a half. And Lord God, we call upon your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to work on us and to convict us and to move us to use all of those resources for the true upbuilding of your kingdom in this community and beyond. Lord, we love you for those who have given, Lord God, for those who had in their hearts to be able to share one with another, for those who desired to give but did not have this day to do so. We ask for blessings upon their lives and their families as well. Lord, we love you and we thank you and appreciate the fact that no matter what we do, that we can't beat you giving. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen again.
the water was cold. Uh -huh. It chilled my body, uh -huh. but not my soul. Uh -huh. If you don't believe uh -huh. that I've been that a year ago we were outside amen right there in the parking lot everybody lined up in the cars and giving God praise outside and wind blowing and everything and different outfits on to try to handle the weather and folks coming up one at a time maybe trying to lift up a song and now we've come back at Mother's Day and come back in the sanctuary newly renovated and redone and now let's give the Lord a hand for our choir, amen, and for our musicians and for all the growth that we've had to come back thus far, amen, amen, amen. Come this far by faith is our hymn for our anniversary year. We're so thankful. We never could have thought it would go like this, amen. <laughs> but that's all right. We still praise him in the midst. And that is good news, good news, and good news again. It's so wonderful to see each and every one of you here on this Communion Sunday and to be here yet again. Our message today, um, I'm going to deliver it a little bit differently than normal, maybe a little upside down. You know, normally we give the scripture first and then we share some things. I might end up going to the scripture last, amen? amen. 
we'll have to see how those spirit leads and what he put on my heart to talk about um i plan to say today but as it just keeps blooming and blooming who knows i may not finish today man is that all right i may just be able to do an intro today and then spill over to another sunday or so but he just put some things on my heart that i wanted to share and i'm just so grateful and so thankful because as i've said before and i'll say it again when we who are preachers of the gospel come and share a message we have been preached to first, amen? That's right. We have been stepped, toes been stepped on first. <laughs> we have been run through it first. And so we're still getting run through it. So I thank God that uh, he has chosen me to be a vessel, not only to be able to share, but also to be able to have to go through these things as well and to grow together. And I look forward to our continual, continual growth together. The title of today's message is it ain't about us. It ain't about us. So often we're focused on self. So often we have an internal focus. And there's sometimes that we're asked, even in Scripture, to look at ourselves and to examine ourselves. But we need to know that overall, especially in the country in which we reside, in this culture in which we reside, we need to sometimes look in the mirror and say, it ain't about you. It ain't about you. And as we're together in community, we need to know it ain't about us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, love you, appreciate you for all that you have done. If you don't do yet another thing for us, Lord God, you've already done over and above anything we could ever ask or think. Lord God, for you who is the author and finisher of this creation, is also choosing to be the author and the finisher of our individual faith. Lord God, we're so thankful that we can close our eyes and bow our heads and communicate with some being, someone who is so awesome. That we can have the audacity, the boldness to come before your throne because of your son and your sacrifice and your love through your son Jesus. Lord God, we are so pleased that even if we don't have the time to, to bow our heads, even if we don't have the ability to close our eyes, we can just shout out his name, Jesus, and be a one-word prayer, an acknowledgement that we are on your side, God, and knowing that you are on our side and that we need your help. So Lord God, right now we acknowledge that we need your help that it ain't about us. We've been through some things this week, Lord God, and we've done some things this week that we need forgiveness for, Lord God, and we lay them on the throne. But Lord, at the same time that we lay them on the throne, we rebuke the devil who tries to accuse us with those things and tries to make us feel guilty about those things, and we release it to you because you want us to walk unfettered with that light burden so that we can go out and minister your gospel and minister your love one to another. So we're so thankful for that. So Lord God, as we are here together, Lord God, let your spirit flow freely around us, within us, under us, over us, <laughs> and bind us together as one in the body of Christ. Lord God, make our hearts and minds fertile ground for the receiving of your seed that will be planted today, that it might grow and bear much fruit so that we can eat of it, share it one with another, and have it even more abundance for later. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. It ain't about us. When I was a young boy in a very conservative, very, I dare say, dry Baptist church, amen. <laughs> I used to hear people say these words. They used to say, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Y'all ever heard that before? I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I used to kind of resent those words a little bit because when I used to hear them out of the mouth of the speaker, 
no matter what they meant them to sound like, I thought they were bragging on themselves. I thought they were trying to say, I'm all that. I've got it. I got everything I need to get, and I'm fine, and I'm secure. And they were wearing it as a badge of honor about what they got. But guess what? What you ain't got. I am saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But that's because maybe I didn't know fully what it was. Amen. 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 I didn't fully know what it was to be saved, to be sanctified, or filled with the Holy Ghost. So maybe they were wearing it as a badge of honor. Maybe they were bragging on it. But I wasn't in a position to say because I hadn't had that same experience. But what I do know is when we hear those three statements that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, all those are are symbols or evidence of God's unadulterated grace. Because when we're saved, that means we've been rescued. We've been liberated. And so to say is that the three points like i said this, this sermon is going to be a little upside down we have been the first point is we have been liberated we've been saved we've been liberated and if you've been liberated guess what you didn't do it to yourself you didn't do it for yourself how many have ever been saved by something saved from something and you did it yourself no you might have escaped or tried to escape but you ain't get saved but by something outside of who you are and what you are in your situation and your circumstance. So when you've been saved, the first thing you need to understand is you have been liberated. The second thing is when you've been sanctified, you have been separated. 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 And when you're separated, you're separated on behalf of God. When God sanctifies you, he's conferring on you a holiness that you didn't earn, you didn't deserve, but what's came from Jesus. Amen. So we've been saved, we've been liberated, we've, we, we, we've been sanctified, we have been, we have been separated. And then finally, our third point is that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning we have been activated. We have been activated. There is a call. There is a purpose. There is a duty. There is something that needs to occur. There is something that needs to happen. There's an action that needs to go forward. And this, we need to do that in the name of Jesus. So we have been liberated as being saved. We have been separated as being sanctified. And we have been activated as being filled with the Holy Ghost. And continuing in this upside-down message, I want to give you an example of somebody who just really touches my heart, who's really been through all of that. And you all don't know her personally because she lived way before we lived, but we know her story. Amen. And that's the story of Harriet Tubman. Yes, Harriet Tubman is a powerful woman of God. When she was young, she was an enslaved girl, and she worked inside the house. And notice I said she was enslaved and not a slave. Amen. Amen. We need to realize that being enslaved is, a, is being victimized by other people. Being a slave is identity and she did not choose to be a slave. Amen. Are you choosing to be a slave today? No. Amen. They were enslaved people. They weren't slaves. Amen. So as an enslaved person working in the master's house, she was going out one day into the village and into the town and there was somebody who was trying to escape their enslavement, which anybody with good sense would try to do, amen? And in an effort to catch that person, somebody picked up a two-pound weight and they threw it and they were aiming at the person trying to escape, but it hit Miss Harriet upside the head and knocked her coal out. No, we weren't there, and we were not doctors, most of us. Some of us here are, but we weren't there to diagnose her. But what we found out was an after effect is not only did she get hit in the head and have part of her skull damaged, but we found out that as years went on in her life, she began to have unpredictable blackouts, unpredictable times where she could just be walking along or in mid-conversation and just fall asleep to our eyes. But what we didn't know was in her eyes and in her mind and her spirit, she was seeing visions 
from Almighty God. So here you have an individual who was enslaved, being victimized, be, 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 being hurt, and then something seemingly horrible happened to her. She got hit in the head by something that wasn't even meant for her. Anybody ever been hit by something that wasn't meant for you? <laughs> somebody aiming to damage somebody else and it ended up hitting you? Somebody aiming to hurt somebody else nearby you and it ended up hitting you too? That has happened to more than one of us, amen? And so this happened to her, yet in the midst of that, she had a modicum of her salvation right then. She began to increase in the intimacy and relationship of her almighty God and with her almighty Father, God in heaven. And so she began to have these visions. But then something happened as time went on. She found out that where she was in Maryland, they were starting to grow a different crop and they didn't need as many enslaved people. But cotton was getting big, so they started selling all the people south. And some of her relatives got sold. And she was like, oh, no, this stuff is bad enough. I don't want to go out of the frying pan into the what? Into the fire. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm not dealing with that. I'm going to separate. <laughs> I'm going to run away. I'm going to leave this situation. I'm going to risk everything just so that I can get out of the circumstance so I won't be sold to the south, separated from my family, and even be in a harder working environment. So she ran away. And that sanctification was difficult. It was difficult to separate. She went 90 miles on foot in the dark, through the woods, uncharted area, through the dark, with dogs on the heels being chased. And so she got that separation. She got that salvation. She was liberated, and now she got the sanctification. So now she's free. She's in Philadelphia. She's free and it's all over, right? <laughs> Everything's over. No, 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 no. When we get saved, we have been liberated by Almighty God. When we get sanctified, we have been separated by the grace of Almighty God. But once we receive those, there's an accountability and there's a responsibility that happens. And then we get filled with the Spirit and we get activated to do something for God. So she did something that seemed insane after she was saved and she was sanctified. She made a decision, I'm going to go back and help somebody else. How many of us go back and help somebody else? How many of us get out of a situation that we didn't think we could escape from, we didn't think we could be delivered from, we didn't think we could be liberated from, and then choose to go back? She not only chose to go back, the story tells us she went back over 13 times and got over 70 other folk <laughs> and brought them with her. Not only that, her story didn't end there. Even after she did that and the, and the nation was plunged in the Civil War, she chose to go back even further south where she was threatened to be sent, to go further south. And it, during this war and liberate over 700 people in South Carolina. She was the only woman to have ever led a military troop in that war, black or white. Only woman and liberated 700 people near the coast of South Carolina. Let's look at our scripture this morning. Our scripture from, comes from the Gospel of John. Chapter 3. Gospel of John, chapter 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. We have three scriptures today, but we may only end up dealing with one today and then come back to the other ones. Amen. Amen. But if you look at John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God was with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, 
unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter in to the kingdom of God. Here, Jesus is setting the stage for salvation, for liberation, for being born again. He's letting Nicodemus know that it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit that these things are accomplished. That is a situation and a circumstance where you can't control it. It's not in the natural. It is something that's supernatural. It's something of the spirit. But most of us can't even understand the natural things going on, as he was telling Nicodemus, let alone the spiritual things. So here Nicodemus is, one of the Pharisees, in other words, one of the ones in the know, one of the reverends, one of the bishops, one of the elders, <laughs> one of the overseers, whatever you want to call us folk with these office names. He was one. And they were coming against Jesus, but he had to sneak and come at night in shame. And so he came at night, but what, what really gets me is what he says. He says, we know that you're of God. We know that you're of God. Because you couldn't do these signs and these wonders and these things that you do unless you and God were on the same page. Unless you were united one with each other. So they knew this, but still they sought to persecute him. Still they sought to keep him under thumb. Those folks who were enslaving people like Harriet, they knew who we were. <laughs> they knew where we came from. They knew how powerful a people we are, but no. They wanted to come in the night of who they are and try to enslave and chain and damage us. But they knew all along. They just chose to lie to themselves. And so Jesus says, unless you be born of both the water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. It ain't about us. No, it's not. It ain't about you. He said, how can someone who's old already enter into the womb? That's somebody who is self-focused. We need to get out of ourselves. We need to get out of what we think we are and what our limitations are and understand what God is trying to share with us. What God is trying to share with us is no matter where you find yourself, there is salvation that's waiting for you. There's a, a, an opportunity to be liberated. What's holding you down today? What's holding you back? For us, when we think about being saved, we do usually think about being uh, in a position where now we can access heaven. Now we can be there. Now we can go after we die and pass on and be in the heavenly places. But when you're saved, it's not something that's just stagnant. It is something that's supposed to be perpetual or all-encompassing. That's why you need to be born of the water and the spirit. And when you're born of the spirit, that means you can have that access. But when you're born of water, that means a cleansing. How many of us find ourselves bound today like Harriet? How many of us are just simply house Negroes? How many of us are bound by debt? Bound by illness? Bound by family troubles? Bound by mental strife? Bound by confusion? Bound by ignorance? Bound by our own sense of pain? Bound by our own character? We are shackled. We are locked down. We have been enslaved by the enemy that we like to call Satan. And we have done this and we are locked up. But there is liberation. There is salvation. And it is of the water and the spirit. 
we need to begin to believe and recognize that God is not just a God of the heavenlies. God is a God of right now. God is a God of this earth. God is a God of everything and everyone. How many of us have come by night and approached God in our beds, in the car when we're driving, when we're all by ourselves, when our loved ones aren't there and nobody's there to hear and say, well, Lord, how do I get out of this? Lord, is this what you meant? Is this the best you got? <laughs> I go to church every week. I pray. I've read your word. I've heard it in Sunday school. Is this the best you got? <laughs> and his answer to you should be no. Like we said last week, as always, the best is yet to come. He saves the best for last. Okay, so God is there for us. He's there to liberate us. And even though you may have gotten out of the field, amen, and made it to the house, you are still enslaved. Many of us have had field experiences too. We're being, we're being racked with pain from day after day where we don't think we can take it. You know, and we like to say a statement that is not biblically accurate. We like to say a statement that God would put no more on you than you can bear. That's not biblically accurate. Where it comes from is a saying that God will always provide a way of escape. But God often puts on us more than we can bear with the purpose that we understand that we call on him. I don't know about y'all, maybe y'all are different, maybe y'all can testify to me, but I have been through many days where I said to the Lord, I cannot take this. This is too much. It is overwhelming. I, I'm getting crushed underneath the weight of all these issues and all these shackles. Lord, deliver me. And he is faithful to be able to do it. Because I call out to him. Because I call out to him. I can't figure my way out of everything. And the few times that I have figured my way out of something, I end up in something worse. <laughs> y'all ever figured y'all way out of something and into something worse? <laughs> I know I've done that. But God is a God of liberation. God is a God of salvation. God is a God that can rescue us. And Jesus right here is setting the stage. As we move on to Next Sunday, we'll also talk about that sanctification. We'll also talk about that being filled with the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about the separation. We'll talk about being activated. But right now, let's just rest in this point. In this point that his salvation is real. And it's not just about sending you to heaven. But it's about where you are right now. You can be liberated right where you are. Remember when Tubman went and she left, here she was hit in the head. She was still enslaved, but he gave her a vision of something. He gave her a vision of something that ultimately inspired her to be able to put at risk everything and to be separate. So right now, you might be in the midst of a greatest mess you've ever been in, but he might be giving you a vision, or maybe even this sermon is a word to let you know that there is something better coming. There is something better up north. There's something better out there for you. And he can make it happen. Amen. We know it in the Psalms. In Psalm 23, we know he says, he will prepare a table before you. In the what? In the very presence of my enemies. He will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now, I've learned over the years that God is never an either and or God. God is an all-encompassing God. God can take all of that. And so when I grew up young and I heard that word, that he prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies, I only thought about it one way. And that way that I thought about it was, yeah, we're going to show off. All the enemies going to be standing there. They're going to be hungry. <laughs> They're going to be upset. I'm going to be sitting at the table, I'm going to be eating my, my turkey and my collard greens and my ham and my mac and cheese. I'm going to have the nice yeast rolls and all that. And they're just going to be standing there looking sad because they can't get nothing to eat because they're my enemies. And I'm going to grow up down, I'm going to get the food, I'm going to go on, and they ain't going to have nothing. Okay? Well, part of that may be true. 
But that's not all it is. There's another way that can show. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Anybody ever here have a holiday meal before with your family? <laughs> he prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Not so that they can be standing behind you while you're eating, but maybe your enemies are sitting at the table with you. And in the very presence, in the very company of your enemies, you can still feed, you can still feast, you can still be fed right there with them. You can be wrestling with them, you can be struggling with them, but he's prepared that table for you right there. And I know that's true with Jesus because even at the Last Supper, which we celebrate today, he prepared the table and his enemy was sitting right there dipping with him in the very presence of his enemy, but his enemy was still a puppet. His enemy had to go and do what he had to do so liberation and salvation could come. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Maybe not just to mock them or to show them who God is, but maybe to give unity and to show how even the evil things and the enemies of this world are still having to, be, to fall under God's plan. And then another way he might mean, and I've only found three, and maybe when I grow a little older, a little wiser, maybe I'll even hear yet another. But he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies, meaning that even if you're overrun with your enemies, even if you're like Harriet and they're all around you, you can't find your way out. You look to the left, your enemy's there. You look to the right, they're there. You look at the front and the back, over and, up and below. They're all around you but you still have your table. He can still feed you right where you are. You ever been somewhere and all things seem to be coming against you, but then a word comes in your mind. A word comes in your heart and delivers you. That word may be a reflection of something that your mother or father said or your grandmother or grandfather said, or it may be that the Holy Spirit brought it back to your remembrance from a scripture that you read. But even in the middle of the enemy being all around you and you being surrounded, he can still prepare a table for you and give you his word. Amen? Amen and amen. 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 If you would, stand to your feet right now, giving God honor. Let's thank him for what he's done for us. Amen. Thank him for his salvation. Thank him for his liberation. Thank him for what he has done. He has saved us. He has sanctified us. He has filled us with the Holy Spirit. He makes all of that available. All of it. But today, let's just focus on that salvation. We, we, we Sometimes, like I said, we're going to look at how we word things here in the church to make sure they really line up with Scripture. Our salvation is not free, but it is freely given is freely given it costs the life of jesus where he had to then take it back <laughs> and rise again is the most expensive gift you've ever received but some of us treat it like nothing because the devil told us to say well it's free how many of us get for free like oh well it's free i'll just get another one it's free i'll just get another one no that is something we should cherish it is the most valuable gift we've ever received and that's salvation so with every head bowed and every eye closed right now Lord we come before you right now just with a spirit of thanksgiving thanking you for liberating us for delivering us for rescuing us not only from this earth and not only from a eternity of torment but even from the situation that we're in right now. Lord, even if we haven't seen that deliverance, even if it hasn't manifested, we pray right now, Lord God, that we align with you and believe with you that whatsoever thing we ask for, we pray, we believe that we'll receive it and we will have it. That if we say, be that mountain be moved and be cast into the sea and we believe it in our hearts, it will be done. And so, Lord God, we thank you in advance for that deliverance. And Lord God, right now, if there's anyone here under the sound of my voice who has not received this great salvation, this expensive gift that is freely offered, 
Lord God, then have them slip their hand to the air and all they have to do is say a prayer with me and be able to receive that. If that's you today and you need that, then lift your hand and we'll pray with you today. Praise the Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We thank God for that. We thank God for that. And now we have the beauty and privilege on this Communion Sunday to be able to transition to what he did. He prepared the table in the very presence of our enemy, and in the presence of his enemy. He prepared it. And we replicate that by having communion one with another. So in this moment of transition to our communion service, if you're here today and there's somebody or some situation that you're still holding on to, that you haven't forgiven, that you haven't let go, that you haven't released, just whisper a private prayer during this time and release it to God. Release that person to God. Forgiving them doesn't mean that they did right. It just means it's releasing you from bondage. God will take care of them. The word says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God will take care of them. But be selfish for a moment. The sermon title is It Ain't About Us. But right now, I want you to know that your forgiveness is about you. When you forgive, it is releasing you to the salvific power of Almighty God. So let's take a moment and meditate and think about that. And if you're here and you haven't received um, a communion vessel, please lift your hand and the ushers and deacons will make sure that you are able to receive that. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without understanding the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment unto themselves. And so we know that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat all of it. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is my new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink all of it.
whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We're not only reflecting what he did those thousands of years ago, but we're doing it together right now because together we are the body and bride of Christ, Amen. of Jesus Almighty. Thank God for being God all by himself, all by himself. Your deliverance is at hand. Your salvation is at hand. Your liberation is at hand. Before we go our separate ways, before we have our benediction and closing prayer, I wish to remind you that we're going to be celebrating the dedication of our Bell Plaza, which not only includes the bell, which we'll discuss on next week, but has the bricks that you all had engraved for your family and for your friends. So please all come out and share with us. Know that this parking lot to my right, to your left, will be left open so that people can stand and see the plaza. So please, if you're parking on this side in that front row, make sure you park on the other side next week and we'll all be able to gather together and sing and to be able to see the bricks uh, that were so well put in place around our bell tower and plaza. If all minds and hearts are clear, praise the Lord. We'll now close out in a word of prayer and benediction. Lord God, we thank you. We love you that we have been saved. We have been sanctified. We have been filled with the Holy Ghost. That we are liberated, we are separated, and now we are activated. Teach us what this means and have us fall in line with what you would have us to do. And now may the grace of God and the peace that passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds here, henceforth, now, and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. Please follow the instruction of the ushers as we dismiss Satan.